everyone. Welcome to From the Void, episode 22. Uh, this is where we talk about all about Eternal and our experiences with the game. With me, as always, is Bassoon. How are you, sir? Hey, man. I'm having a good time. It's really rainy here, and I'm kind of tired of it, but it gives me an excuse to sit around and play video games. Nice, nice. Uh, why don't you uh, introduce our guest? We have a pretty special guest today. Um, let's tell us about him, Bassoon. Today, on the From the Void podcast, we have the Canadian Wonder, the man who invented the card haunting screen, Vara's best friend, and my teammate, SPG's very own, THE Overmaster, the the is very important. Hey, Over, how's it going? Uh, not too bad, you know. Uh, it's been a, it's been a good week in the 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 Overmaster world. So you know, uh, at least <laughs> eternal wise, eternal wise. Eternal. Tell me, uh, I'll let you make no mistake. My life is terrible, but <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. real. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a, un, an unemployed uh, electrical engineer. I think my life can't really get much worse. But uh, hey, Carpola's uh, power has been out for three hours here in the Twitch chat. So maybe he'll pay you to fly out to to Virginia to, and fix that for him. All right. That, that, I don't I don't think that's my part of my pay grade. But you know. <laughs> um, no, uh, I gotta. I got my fourth. I, th I actually think you have more top eights than me in the ETSs, but I did get my fourth top, top eight in the ETS this weekend. Oh, hold on. I actually have those numbers right in front of me because uh, a friend sent me a link. Hold on. My lifetime top eights in ETS are buffering, buffering, four. Four? Okay, so yeah. we're tied with each other. Nice. <laughs> Finally. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I get to get up there uh, with, with the greats, the elites, right? <laughs> <laughs> also, my lifetime win percentage is in the 40s, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, think, well, I think it's only around 50% for me, uh, despite having, you know... I think uh, anything, I think anything 50 or above is, like, pretty good. I had a 57 last year, I think. 57 or 58, which was, was nice. Um, all right. Uh, Navalis, are you, how you doing over there, buddy? I am doing good, sorry. I was just messing, trying to figure out the echo thing. But anyway, if I'm okay. echoing, I apologize. I am working on it. Let's talk you about... You want me to drive the show while you do that? Uh, it's good. We're, we're gonna... We're just... <laughs> <laughs> you may have to. Anyway, but, um... How I have is my our... podcast driver's license. I can do it. I know, I know. Well, I may, I may need you to do that in a couple <laughs> weeks. I might be out of... I might be out of country. Anyway, uh... Let's talk about our week in Eternal. Bassoon, how's how's your week of Eternal been? Okay. What a roller coaster I've been on this week. Uh, I climbed out of the dumpster with, like, aggro and reanimator, just playing, like, whatever whatever beat the meta pocket I was in. I climbed all the way to rank 200. And then, it was on my stream, it was a lot of fun. And then, the next week, or the next day, I lost 13 games in a row. <laughs> in ranked eternal ladder that's not an exaggeration i went back in and looked at my match history 13 games in a row i lost that is my record wow and it <laughs> brought me all the way down to yes yeah, it was impressive. insane i was tilted off the face of the planet um and it was like I was, I was, I just, I hadn't played any Eternal that day, and I was just like, ah, I'm just gonna go get my pack. I was on my tablet, <laughs> so when I'm on my tablet, I hate building new decks, so I just play whatever is there. And like Yetis wasn't working, like Rally Queen wasn't working, and nothing was working. And 13 games in a row later, I finally had my pack, and my my good friend and and future guest on the show. Ahorn Delvin just said, was it worth it? <laughs> was that pack worth it? <laughs> um, so then, the next day, starting, I started my stream, I was around rank 500, and uh, Kamado, actually next week's guest on the show, Kamado, uh, I remembered him telling me, like, this Combray Chain deck is ludicrously easy to play. Uh, it's, like, impossible to punt. It's, tr it's Travis proof. Um... And it's it is. Really, it's really, really it's really easy to play. <laughs> um, and I took that from rank 490-ish to, are you ready? I'm opening my profile right now. 
I am currently ranked 69. <laughs> I have climbed 400 ladder points in the last two days. Ray wow. Gasm. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that, that's the best rank, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope it holds. I, I actually Jack gained one rank, rank, and I was 68 for like 10 minutes, and I was so mad, and then I fell back down to 69. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, that's my whole story. It's a long story, but I felt like it was worth telling. Um, so I'm going to try and camp around... I'm going to try and camp top 100. I haven't gotten my top 100 fi finish yet for the... Uh, for the East, for the uh, what? What's it called? Constructed Masters tournament. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what it's called, but it's for the for the World Championship of Eternal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I just I just want to do that and never care about my ladder rank again. Yeah, me too. I haven't gotten it either. That's what I'm doing <laughs> as well. I'm uh, I'm You're sitting like there. You're fifty and... right now, right? Yeah, I'm top fifty right now. So well, I, there. I also climbed on stream. <laughs> With um, not with chains, not with not with a meta deck like a tier one meta deck or something like that. That's something you would ex expect somebody to be top fifty with or something. No, 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 I climbed with with wisps. That's right. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. And so, so yeah, is that, is all what you've been doing this week? Do you play any draft? Have you done any draft this week? <laughs> uh, me? Yes. No. Okay. Oh no, I did. No, I, I did play one draft. I played. Oh. I did play one draft. Went two and three with a sick, sick deck. It had uh, like I don't remember what it was. Anyway, uh, I did play one game against Ravid and uh, Worm Calling, and uh, that was it for my drafting. That was it for my drafting for the day. I, 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 I will have to, I, that that person. I, I I have to say maybe that person uh, got lucky, but I think they may have been camping with their uh, with their deck for a while or something like that. It was like I need to play this this sick deck. I don't know. It was just it was gross. I cool, cool. I I can't get a I can't get cards like that. I I hear I hear second blue talk about uh, the, the these crazy decks he always has, and I'm like, well, my deck is like okay, but I didn't see those kinds of cards in my draft pool. Feels bad, <laughs> man. So yes, uh, as for my week, uh, I think I fixed the volume. I think my uh, my cam has a microphone on it, and it was going through there instead of actually my microphone. Go, I think I fixed it. So that anyway. was like the first thing Zeroshio suggested. Well, I had okay. There's, this, <laughs> there's a story I will tell you about that later. Okay, I did eventually. I had to. I was checking. That was like the last setting I checked, and I was like, "Huh, Zeroshio so was right." Okay, anyway, so let's just. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, my week in Eternal, I've been playing mostly Yetis. I've been playing a few other decks, but I've just been messing with, like, throwing different Yetis in a deck. I've been slowly climbing. I'm almost a master, so I'm determined to make masters with Yetis. And so, but, um, but yeah, I haven't been playing a lot of Eternal because I've been playing another uh, game on uh, another handheld, a Nintendo Switch. So, I've been kind of wrapped in that, playing that, but uh, I I'm still going to hit masters and all that stuff but i'm determined to do with yeti so i've been having fun with yetis and i love still still when people have to pause and like hover over your car to read what the yetis do i still love that i don't know it's just like it's just it just brings me joy <laughs> i think it should literally be against the law to call a deck a yeti's deck when it doesn't have islands intervention in it mm, that card that card alone is actually one of the reasons to play uh, uh sure. yetis. okay and it, okay. it's I it's pretty crazy to me that that deck is very good. It's just like a pretty good aggro deck. But it's crazy to me that you would cut that card. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, it's like a Skycrag splashing Yetis. You can say that, right? If you want to I've say. played Islands Intervention in decks that don't have any Yetis, because I think the card is that good. In, in Hailstorm Stand Together meta, I just played it in Skycrag aggro. Yeah, you know, I've I've done that before. Like, uh, put it for example, Islands Intervention, in, like Cyborgs, when that was a thing, and yeah. it never, uh, it for me, it never performed as well as uh, what, what it, and that was in the time of like Unseen Commando and things of this nature, right? When I when it had like realistic targets in the air, and whereas right now it's not a, like I I don't I don't think they're realistic targets. Oh, you can kill Rizan with a um, with a Howling Peak Smuggler out. That's interesting. Mm. Overmaster, you're talking to the Yeti man. You don't think I've done that? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never done it before. I, oh, I, I, I bow to the master, though. I bow <laughs> to the master. <laughs> uh, I, I still maintain to this day that back in TJP midrange meta, uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeti soft countered it. I don't think it had like an absurd win rate into into it, but I think when TJP mid was very popular, uh, Yetis was like a fine bring to a tournament. I, I, I could see that for sure. Yeah, yeah I yeah. could see that. So, all right, let's move on to our news this week. Uh, Basun, do you want to take it off about the uh, the first item on the news since you're a part of this? Go for all it. All right, the floor kids. Is your... All right. We've got a lot of money. <laughs> Everybody here is rich, right? There's a lot of money floating around in our small community. Uh, so let's let's stop buying hero avatars. Stop buying packs. Stop paying money to enter the ECQs. And do some good with your money for once, for Christ's sake. Nrosh1, popular streamer, former guest on this show. I think he actually mentioned that he was doing this when he was a guest on the show. Is doing a 24-hour stream uh, to raise money and awareness and benefit the Ronald McDonald house. Um, so, this weekend, starting Saturday, I think at noon... Uh, Twitch.tv, Nrosh1, N-R-A-U-S-C-H, the number one. Uh, he will be doing a 24-hour stream, and there's he's doing a lot of really cool events. Um, the one I'm going to be involved with will be a... Oh, Overmaster, what did you just get, uh, what did you just get, uh, moderated for in the chat? Um, you tried to post a link, didn't you? What? Did, the, did, did, did that not come up? Yeah, they don't allow uh, they don't allow links around here. Oh, um, I was linking Enrosh's streams. <laughs> I, listen, Nightbot does not discriminate against links. It's 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 uh, here yeah. or it's not. Um, it okay, so you can post it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not noon. It's five. Okay, Enrosh's uh, stream this Saturday will be starting at five p.m. Um, Eastern, I think. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and. Um, so that's uh, twitch.tv slash nrosh1. Uh, the, the event I will be involved with will be a popper tournament. I will be doing commentary with nrosh for the popper tournament he is managing. If you want to go to eternaltournaments.com and click on up t upcoming tournaments to register for that, um, there will be a $20 Steam gift card to the winner of this tournament. Uh, that will be starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, so um, anybody who wants to play in the ETS... And then switch over and get your popper jollies off. Um, uh, you can, you will have time to do both. Um, <laughs> popper jollies. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. I guess this. I guess this episode is marked a a NSFW, huh? Um, <laughs> um, the donation incentives I will be running during my portion of the broadcast will be if anybody um, remembers um, the infamous moment on my stream where I had a sub goal to eat a banana, um, I will be doing that again. If we raise $100 during my portion of the stream, I will eat a banana with the peel on um, for, for the people. Um, and if we raise $200, I will be making my Twitch debut on my bassoon. I will play. I will finally... Give the people what they've been asking for for literal months. I will play my bassoon for them for $200. Oh, man. Oh, man. That, that's, those, these are the easiest uh, goals I've ever seen from a Twitch channel for a, for, for a charity event. Man, <laughs> you could have easily uh, l launched these into, like, the, the 1K range. I don't know. Oh, yeah. the, I, we 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 weren't sure how open the pockets of the Eternal community would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we wanted, like e like... Easily attainable goals that would also Twitch make a difference chat, to Twitch community is the Twitch community, especially our community, is crazy. Like... I mean, I got fifty <laughs> subs when I made that banana goal, so I yeah. get it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen yep. it in action. <laughs> uh, but oh, yeah. uh, so that that is this weekend. There, Tall Shark and Handsome will be involved. Future guest of the show, a uh, very popular streamer, and Grim Fan, former guest of the show, a future guest of the show. Um, will also be involved in an event. Um, so 24 hours, 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday to Sunday Eastern Time. Um, uh, tune into Enrosh One's stream. We love him. We love you. Please donate money to the children. Uh, Jay in chat says, "I love that it's easier to get you to eat a banana peel than play your profession." I'm shy. I don't care that you people think I'm bad at card games. 
I it would actually hurt my feelings if I played bassoon and one of you guys was like, "Man, this guy sucks," because I care very much about how I sound on bassoon. Um, so that I'm just shy. I know how cruel Twitch chat can be, and it's hard to be vulnerable on the internet sometimes. But I'll do it for the kids. So, so yes, yeah. I am looking forward to seeing all of that go down. I want to see bassoon play his bassoon, okay? And. Uh... <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway, but, uh, we're also eating the man. That, that's great. If you have not seen him, you do. It's a great. Find Twitch clips. This is great. Ah, uh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> All right. It's actually it's actually a, a saved video on my channel. You can is, you can you watch the banana. <laughs> I've watched it out. at least forty times. I'm not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Anyway, yeah, I believe we, we talked about that on our show too. How to taste and everything. But anyway, we may talk about that if you eat another banana. So, but anyway, let's go on. <laughs> uh, yes, crack that list. I am a bassoon player as my profession. Sorry, continue. Before no, we, no. Before we move on, I just want yes. to say SBG is um, is really um, we are playtesting a lot for that popper tournament. At least me, uh, uh, me and a couple of other uh, other players. You you guys better be ready with with your <laughs> with your with your popper decks. Uh, we, we got some spice coming for you guys. I, the, I, earlier this week, somebody tried to talk to Missing Toes, former guest of the show, about just the game eternal and he was like if it's not about popper i don't want to i don't want to talk to you about the game right now i i, <laughs> only about about right. <laughs> <laughs> we, I was I, I fell asleep still playing popper uh, watching missing toes and tadavath playing popper last night i fell asleep to that <laughs> <laughs> so if you just want a nice relaxing evening grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and just put on popper and for eternal and then just drift off into the night. There you go. But make sure I might you... be drinking a beverage during that stream, but it won't be coffee. Uh, I was just saying, make sure you <laughs> donate first, and then then drift off. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, all right, let's move on to our next bit of news. So I'm excited about that. Remember, it starts five o'clock on Saturday, uh, five what five p.m. Eastern, right? And so don't forget Correct. that. And so, all right, let's move on. We have an event. Also happening this weekend, it is the uh, Heroes Rise event, and this event right here is basically the decks can only contain a single copy of non-power cards. So there you go, it only contain a single card. So your hero must come from the factions contained in your deck. For example, so you, yeah, go ahead. So we've done a singleton event before. This is basically singleton with a big twist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, well, what do you think about this? Uh, okay. Well, the twist is we did. We I interrupted you before you got to the twist. Yes, I apologize. Yes, I'm gonna... Once per game, you may pay two power to call your hero. When you call your hero, you create and draw the chosen hero that you p picked in your deck selecting screen. Mm -hmm. um, and that's only once per game. Uh, if you actually search hero in the deck builder in the card in the card what's it called card collection screen mm -hmm. you can see like basically any 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 card that has a proper noun for a name is is usually going to be a hero yes um so it's very reminiscent of commander and mtg right Her hero the people does not count i asked lsv this directly <laughs> uh so yeah yeah, and your hero gets plus one, plus one, and you can choose from one, three random, well, three random upgrades to apply to your hero, like plus one, plus one, unblockable or deadly, um, but you also gain ages as well. So, Dude. I, I think it's, a, I think it's an interesting twist. I'm just interested to see how it, how it plays out. You know, because I'm not exactly sure, but I, I, I want to try. Do you randomly get uh, those three abilities assigned? Like, you get to choose between one of three random abilities, or yes. are, are those yes. set? No, you choose okay. from one of three random upgrades. So you'll get three. Okay. Uh, you, get, okay. you can choose from, yeah. You choose from one. It's kind of reminiscent of Adapt in Hearthstone. Okay. Yes. Yes. So you can I, like I don't do know that. what that so, means, but... Um, yeah, it's kind of like when you play... Um, oh... Typhus, when he comes down, you know, oh, then, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it gives you, yeah, it's kind of like something like that, but a little bit more you get to choose. Anyway, but, uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. I want to try it out. I'm not, like, it just sounds weird, and it sounds cool, so it's, it's good. I have two complaints about this event. Sorry, okay. over it. Did you have something to say? Um, 
I'll let you do do your compla- complaints. For the, there, there is a there is an exploit in the game in in the mode. Oh, please tell the people about an exploit. I'm excited to hear about that. Ooh. I'm gonna well, whine first though. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so my two big complaints about it is the point. The reason that like Commander even really works as a format and and is fun is because you can build your deck around strategies that involve your commander and because it's repeatable right Mm -hmm. um and the fact that you can only call your hero one time in a game i'm sure that they tested it and i'm sure that this is just how they had to balance it um but it is kind of a bummer that you can only call your hero once per game um because it just makes it's already it's already like a wildly inconsistent format because it's a singleton format um and so having having access to that hero is what makes the strategies like a little less um, variable. Um, so only getting it once is kind of a bummer. My second big complaint is is that these events always end like Sunday afternoon, and I never start my stream until like Sunday night. So I never get to play these events on stream, and it's a bummer, and it makes me mad. Is um, it only can, Sunday afternoon? Uh, they used to go through like Monday morning. And they stopped doing it. I assume just because no one was playing them, and and they were just having dead queues on Monday morning. Um, but yeah, I never I never get to do these events on stream, um, and that that's when it's most fun is when I can take like idiot decks from viewers and say like, all right, um, you know, uh, waste your gems or your or your gold. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Waste oh, my gold you. for me, stream. I'll do it. <laughs> um, but I don't. I never get to do it. It's a bummer because I don't stream on Saturdays. We should. We um, should make a petition for, for, to have it end at midnight on Sunday. That way, you would. Get that would be. Yeah, yeah. That would be. That would be a lot better for for a competitive player uh, uh, like me, and also like Bassoon, right? We, we we do you know do some preparation for the ETS, and we have to play in the ETS and things like this, right? And we don't get a lot of time, and especially with the popper event, like we're not going to get a lot of time to play this uh, play this event. Uh, uh, as cool as it is, right? We're not going to get a lot of time, so yeah, I would I would prefer a, a wider window for for uh, for players to play, especially um, since uh, so much of it is around the weekend. I'm sure I'm sure they've done all the market research and all, they have all the data, and we don't because we suck. And I'm sure I'm sure that they have this time limit set up to keep queue times reasonable, uh, but it's just a it's just kind of a bummer. Mm. It is. It is. Uh, uh, yeah. Tell me about your exploit yes. over Overmaster. Please tell us. Okay, so there's only one hero game that you're able to uh, keep around forever, right? Is it Mokdo? Mokdo. Oh! It's so. It's. I think that's really stupid that Mokdo isn't banned from this format because if they were going to have a hero. Um, yeah, I, I just don't think that uh, Mokdo should be in the format. I, I don't necessarily think that Mokdo is uh, busted as it. Uh, as anything, but like if you kill their hero, like that's just such a downgrade to to their game plan, right? If you're building around it, whereas if you have if you kill a Mokdo, it's just gonna come back, right? And yeah, but Mokdo always... isn't a build around card though. It's just a five five. Yeah, but I mean, I... if Wump had infinite revenge, then we could talk. They they should all have infinite revenge. That would act- yeah, actually. If 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 the format was like pay to draw your hero, give it Mokto's text, that would actually be. <gasps> what if one of the build random upgrades oh, is man. revenge? <laughs> oh, well, I mean... Revenge never ends. Oh man! Wow. <laughs> it would only come back once with the revenge, but yeah, that, that that's kind of a sick ability that it could get. So revenge, I'm sure one of them is revenge. Hey, it, are scions heroes, or are they a different thing? Uh, did they show up? I don't know. I didn't look. I was I was hoping somebody else knew without me having to do uh, anything. Let me um, open my card collection. Yep. The scions are heroes. Scions are heroes. So you can play okay. Caleb. Caleb would actually kind of hot. You have to do. You do have to pay ten for him. But yeah, you got. You can get charge and some other random ability. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it'll be interesting to see the strategies that happen. Do you have a really expensive hero, or do you have a cheaper hero, and ooh, yeah. what is better? You know, so, but uh, but there there's some there's some there's some things you can do. So it's gonna be cool. Oh, yeah. Severin's right. kind of interesting too because he can come hmm. back anyway. Oh, that's fun. 
It's so. bad, but it's fun. Yes. <laughs> still, not, still not very good, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, someone said Kyphus also. Hmm. Oh, Kyphus gets four random keywords? Let's go. <laughs> Boom, four. All right. All right, let's... Let's go on. Any last words on this event before we move on to our next bit of news? Are we good? All right, moving on. The silence, we move. All right. Uh, the next thing, we have, our, we have the ETS this past week. Uh, the top eight, uh, we had some, some Combre, some Genev, some, uh, we had uh, Scrappy Hour again in there. Uh, what do you think about this top eight? I thought it was pretty excellent. This top eight, it was a, uh, it was well rounded in terms of. Had some very eight. handsome players in it, right? Yeah, right over. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell us, tell uh, us a little bit about your run with uh, um, Greenadens. Okay. Um, so, first round, I faced Kamado. Whoa, 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 whoa! You, you. Okay, never mind, never mind. I was thinking of something else. Go ahead, talk. I was like going to ask you about your deck, but I'll ask you after. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I faced. Um, I faced Kamado first round. Of course, I crushed him. Easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, no, nah, I'm just. Is that a general? Really like, good really cool. uh, I think. I think it. I think it is. I think that uh, Kamado's third draw was not very good, so uh, it wasn't exemplary of what should happen with the deck, with 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 the um, matchup. But um, it. I think it is. I think you can go wide on them pretty quickly, and they can't really do a lot about it. Um, they they have to get like the mega ramp draw to win against. So yeah, many I think tokens, so. I think. Mm -hmm. You have torches. You have torches. Sometimes you even have defiance. Although I didn't have defiance for this specific tournament. Um, then I faced. I went. To, I started off four zero, which is the reason why. Like I started off four zero, and then of course I lost three matches in a row. Easy, right? Mm. Um, the classic. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I faced. I know I faced Jocks in third round. He was on a really cool deck um, that had like Reality Wardens made and stuff like that. He was came really prepared for Reanimator, and of course there was only one in the field, so it's kind of, kind of uh, unfortunate. But I thought I, I really liked the look of his deck. Um, third uh, third round, I faced against I, I don't know. I don't remember um, a lot. But I, I know that I lost against Pythias, who came second in the tournament, and that was kind of a bad, uh, bad, uh, bad set of a bad series, a bad series. Ooh. And then against Komodo, um, who came third in the event, third fourth, uh, I beat him, and he. Uh, you, you can go and check it out on stream. It's pretty, uh, pretty hilarious. He made a misclick that, um, that, uh, yeah, that was uh, he he. I, I think that's targeting f feature for for the displays, uh, especially like display of ambition stuff like that. It's kind of, uh, I, I've I've certainly um, lost games because of it, uh, where where you target your own creatures, you know, your units, um, instead of instead of using the other mode because you have to target your face for the for the other mode, and uh, sometimes you miss your avatar and you swing off to the side. Yeah, and that's the what set. The set has been out long enough that I've played all the displays, and I will tell you. I have used the wrong mode of every display probably the the first time I cast it on every time. That's like the first time I cast each display, I did the wrong one. Uh, yeah. It's it's like kind of unintuitive the the uh, the way you have to cast them. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's probably unintuitive for a reason because they they have to make it they they have to have the 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 UI like sort of self contained and stuff. But but it's still it. it Komodo lost the game because of that. I actually think that he he didn't he he, he shame conceded. <laughs> he gave, gave me the win, you know. Uh, but yeah. I think there was I think there was a chance that they uh, they could have come back. They certainly could have beat me if they had uh, chosen the correct mode. So. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean I lost against Gozu uh, on on a pretty sweet deck, the brilliant uh, banter deck, like the the brilliant idea uh, ramp deck into. Um, into pit, pit of the Nectar and stuff like that. Um, I the, hate temporal. the temporal is back. I hate it. <laughs> eh, it's not much, popping up. It's not much of a temporal deck, though. It plays temporal and it wins playing temporal, and I hate it. Yeah. This is one of those matches. You're too much of a over. salty gamer. You're too much of a salty so, gamer. I love it. It just gives me time for the salt to build up because the game's take infinity years. 
Yeah, I mean, I I legit. The more I play this game, the more I I become convinced that the card temporal distortion just shouldn't exist. I hate it. It's a messed up card. It's good when you can play it. It's just, but yeah, that, that card exists in Magic at three less cost, and it's uh and it's not um a problem. Of course, it's a creature there, but like, yeah, I I, I don't I don't. I think that it's honestly too expensive for what it does. You shut your mouth. Ooh. I will end the show right now. <laughs> uh, as far as the top eight goes, I lost to Maul in the top eight. I was on a, a deck that doesn't plan on emptying its hand anytime soon. It's playing Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every time you draw Joe against uh, against Maul, <laughs> you're just, it's, you're just, like, it's uh, good for a rough time. <laughs> your version of FJS has a little bit more game against Maul. Um, but not not enough to ever consistently win a three out of five. I actually think the uh, the other Gredit deck has a little more consistent game against Maul because you can dump your hand a little faster. I'm not talking about the Gredit. I'm talking about your version oh, of FJS versus... versus other versions of FJS. Th yeah. This is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move into because we're we're going to talk about more of your deck in a second. But let, let's let's talk about you for a little bit. Uh, Tell us about yourself. How did you came up with the name Overmaster? Your card game history. When did you start playing Eternal? And what do you do for content? Go for it. All right. Uh, my real name is Sean. Um, it is not Theo. It is not Theodore. It is not Theron. It is not any of these other things that. Uh, uh, I need to see your with. long form birth certificate before I. Hey, believe let, let, let me let me go get it. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a... Uh, okay, so um, my name, The Overmaster, comes from the card Overmaster in Magic. Um, I just added the the on top of it because, you know, it makes it more sound, sound more sinister. I don't know, I was like 14 when I made it, uh, or 13, something like that. Um, I thought it was really clever for thinking that this card that doesn't seem that great was, was, go was good, right? And I was like six, four, 15 when the card came out, something... I don't know. The, the, all, all these... Uh, um yeah a anyway um so the overmaster uh, uh, overmaster is a card of magic it's just like one red like next instant sorcery spell you play this turn um, mm -hmm. it ca can't be countered then draw a card it's only been ever used in one deck ever i think um in a uh, legacy's uh sneak and show uh, as a cyborg card, as a one of in a, in a cyborg or something like that, I don't know. I thought it was good. I thought it was good when it came out. It wasn't, and yeah, that's where my name came from. Um, so I've been obviously that's that's where I get my uh, that's where I've started my um, my card gaming career, so to speak, if you can call it a card career. Mm -hmm. I, that made uh, almost your money off of it, but um, <laughs> it um. Yeah, uh, around uh, fourth edition is when I started uh, playing. Uh, okay, nice. Playing Magic, um, and uh, yeah, I just uh, I I've pretty bad collection. I, I took breaks at the wrong time, so um, so I couldn't uh, couldn't make you know. Uh, I don't have things like dual lands and whatnot. And, you know, all those things are way too expensive now. Yeah. But uh, I started Eternal around um, August of 2016, so I'm I'm an old hat at the game. Um, I, I do have my master sword, the, the orange sword, I guess is the. <laughs> I do have very the orange nice, sword. Very nice. <laughs> what is um, the first deck you ever used to climb to master? I love asking old old players this question. Ooh, Rakano, Aggro. <laughs> Everyone always <laughs> says that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine was Stone Scar. There you go. I, I Stone Scar Aggro. <laughs> that was that that was that's going back when that was the deck. Anyway. But go ahead. I didn't. I didn't get in when when one cost rapid shot was a thing, and I'm I'm bummed out about it. Oh man, it was so good. And champion and the and the champions. Ooh, people are okay. disgusting. People <laughs> are disgusting. <laughs> I played Rakano. I, I played Rakano Artisan in my Rakano Agro deck, and it uh it beat the mirror a lot because there was what it was around at that time, and so. Uh, because because when you play Rakan, obviously your your units your your weapons are bigger now than theirs, so you always had like that one step advantage. It it, it was pretty nice. Um, I had about a ninety percent win rate in the mirror over the course of like two days. It was it was it was <laughs> nuts. Um, the way I started though, I I I 
I think I probably watched an LSV stream. It had to have been LSV stream. I was into the mm -hmm. magic scene at that point, right? Uh, but it was like May of that year, and I and I did sign up for the beta around that time, and I could have gotten in there, but I just forgot about it, right? Like you, you, you know, you sign up for a beta, and then you like you don't get in for like you know two weeks or something like that, and you just sort of forget about the game. And um, I got the friend invite, right? The the um the second invite uh, that I could give to a friend, and that's when I when I um when I got into the game. Around oh, August okay. of that year, and uh, yeah, I've been playing ever since. I, I I've I played, I think I'm probably played in the ETS before uh, before open beta started, um, but uh, I didn't play a lot during that time. Uh, not that I didn't play a lot, but I I was very bad at that time. <laughs> I just w I just was not a very good uh, uh very good player. I was I was the proverbial only builds good only builds decks kind of player i was better at limited at that time um i i came from a um, mostly draft background in uh, in magic like i was not a constructive player when i started a journal but uh i've okay. since fallen in fallen in love with um the actual um uh, the, the the game of eternal and the construction and whatnot and of course and now now uh, i mean you you can you can check out some of my exploits within within the game uh, I've you know I've done pretty well in the tournament scene. Um, I I would like uh, one one thing I do like to brag about is the fact that I am one of two players who have made the last the the top eight of the last two invitationals in the ETS. Oh, that's sick! Very yeah. nice. So, yeah. Me and Tabu, who's of course our world champion, right, are the ones that have made the top eight of the last two invitationals. Oh, so awesome. I didn't realize you made top eight of the last one too. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I I had to beat a, I had to beat BBG on stream and a close five game series to get to the top eight. But yeah, I got there. Ah, you beat a, an artifact player. Artifact easy. player, uh, <laughs> an auto chess player. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. All right, let's move on to our our next topic. We want to talk about, I believe, combo. We decided on this week, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, yep. combo. Because I know we were talking about combo and control, but we're saving control for a later time. But all right, what do you think about combo in this game? What are, for the style? Because a lot of time combo decks kind of like fall a little bit with control decks because you're trying to either control it or you just don't care about your opponent whatsoever and you're just like, I'm going to play solitaire. There's not many <laughs> combo decks in the history of this game that haven't been given the uh, the old yeller treatment by, yes. by old LSV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the no, the Overmaster, you were there when, like, Witching Hour was really powerful, right? Like, yeah. when it was yeah. a lot cheaper, and, yeah, that was crazy. Okay. And, um, but, all right, tell us your take on combo, Overmaster. Um, what, what, what did you want me to talk about with regards to combo? Because I know that the statement that the original person made, well, said that they, they might be having trouble, like, adapting to the different styles, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and uh okay so what are what are the, the the most prominent combo deck in the game right now is what uh reanimator is obviously the most pro prominent co combo deck currently okay um, so take reanimator and tell us some like general game plan rules that apply not only to playing this reanimator deck but like combo yeah. decks in general does that make sense okay so with regards to uh combo um you have to know when to go for it and when not to go for it, right? You may have the combo in your hand, right? Um, you may have the grasp in hand. You may even have a full, a full uh, void, right? Uh, you may have everything set up. Do you push the button? Do you play the grasp? Do you play the vara? What do you do in that situation? Normally, you do play the vara. Like that's pretty pretty easy but you have to you have to you have to be able to play the game correctly to get to the fact that you have vara so you have if you have like for example against certain matchups let's say fdp fdp is a really easy matchup and other people are saying that it, as some people out there are saying that it's um a more 50 50 or something like that it's not if the if the reanimated player knows what they're doing and that's that you you have this card called uh, sabotage right um in, in the back of the delinquent you can get rid of their counter spells and that that's generally what you have to do as a combo player you can't just be um uh, you can't just um set up your combo and go for it that is not how how it works e even in e even in magic um uh, uh hopefully i can make a magic reference like mm -hmm. um like 
let's say uh, um, storm combo or something like that. Um, you can't just go off in the turn that you have all of it. You have to make sure that all the pieces are in uh, all the ducks in a row, and then you have to go for it. You can't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and so you can't go blindly into it because I played going back to Magic: The Gathering. I know this is Eternal Podcast, but I played some combo decks there. And a lot of times you would car you use cards to look at your opponent's hand and take what could shut down your combo. And the only time that you just go for the combo is like when either if you don't go for it now, you're gonna lose anyway. And you just need to like just go for it. And because it's it's if you if they have the answer to it, you lose, but if you don't do anything, you're gonna lose anyway. So I, I figure that's kind of like a balance between that. Um yeah. When exactly. I was like, for example, against aggressive decks, like you have this card called Black Sky Harbinger in your in your deck, right? A lot of times, what you ha what you have to do with the, with the random deck is, of course, you have to identify the fact that you're against an aggressive deck, discard not uh, like maybe discard Vara and that because you have a bunch of discard outlets. But mm -hmm. but if you, all you have is Black Sky Harbinger and you're not going to make it to six uh, power, you have to discard that. Uh, you have to discard that Black Sky Harbinger and bring it back, uh, like on mm -hmm. turn five. You have to do it, right? Yes. There, there's there, there are no other options. It, it isn't true to say with combo decks, you really need to know the meta, but also to, in, basically know the decks you're playing against and what would be in the decks. And yeah. you because if you're just like, okay, I'm playing this deck, and you, I think combo decks is one of those decks where you have to pay attention. Kind of like even with mid range or like with uh, aggro, you can just kind of play. You you do have to pay attention if you really want to advancing. You know. Climb fast, but you know a lot of times you can just throw minions down, go face. You know that's kind of like thing or mid range, just like have the beef for your minions. But with combo, I feel like you really need to know what is your opponent playing and what is their game plan and what they're trying to set up or what are they holding in their hand. You just can't just like you said go mindlessly and play that. Would you say that'd be correct to think about that way? Yeah, for sure. I um. With regards to like, there there are other combo decks in in Eternal that are very viable. Like for example, Kennedans, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, well, how 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 would how would you play a matchup like going in, in, into for example uh, a Vercano Aggro or something like that? It, 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 obviously, it's not a very good matchup. But how would you play that uh, play that out for, from your side, BB? I know that you're uh, Kennedans aficionado. Um, how early would you, for example, pull the switch on the end of hostilities and whatnot, right? Like uh, these pull the switch on the what? The end of hostilities or, or the Kenna or the right? Like whether I think, or not you're... I think Kennedans is like kind of a weird one because the combo is really getting end of hostilities out of your void. I I don't think playing end of hostilities is actually the important part of the combo. I think playing the second end of hostilities for free that you drew for free is the combo. So I think what a lot of Kennedans players do wrong is they hold an end of hostilities for like maximum value. Just fire that off. Just blow it. <laughs> Just play it. P copy a Hojin. It doesn't matter. Get it into your void. It's coming back. And that's the point of the combo is the value you get from repeatable ends of hostilities. Um, end of hostility a Hojin has, has won me a bunch of games of Eternal. Um, so I, understanding where the value is in your combo, I guess, is kind of the, the essence of the question you just asked, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, Jay uh, uh, brings up a point in chat that he wouldn't consider um, uh, Kennedy's a combo. It's more of a synergy deck. Now, sure, what, what, what can you define? What, what, what do you define as a combo deck, though? I, I consider a co combo deck when you set up a sequence of cards in such a way that it uh, basically puts your opponent into an un it puts yourself into an unassailable position. You have won the game at that point. You, you're basically just like playing out the rest of it, right? In terms of, for example, Reanimator, you haven't actually won the game when you set up your combo, right? Yeah, but you 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 have put yourself into and you're gaining so much value from the cards that you played that like you you cannot lose from that position. And I think that's what a combo deck really is, right? Awesome. Yeah. All right. Now let's look flip side. If you know you're playing against combo, what is your goal? Like what what is your strategy? Once you identify that this is a combo deck, whether you're playing aggro, mid range. Or control, what piece of advice would you give for each one of those styles? If you're playing aggro, what advice, you know, mid range, what advice, control, what advice? 
Um, if you're playing against combo, you have to disrupt the one key piece, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have to disrupt the one key piece before they go, before they go off. Um, for example, if you have a gavel in the market, you have your FJS mm -hmm. deck, right? Um, you have to make sure that that gavel resolves, for one thing. You can't just... Okay, you can't... For example, you can't uh, play the, the, um, the merchant on three and get, a, and get a gavel and expect it to, to, to stay, stick around. They're going to uh, sabotage it. You have to understand what the cards in your opponent's deck as well, right? And that's uh, the, uh, the back of the delinquent. Which I think is... If there was any card that I would want nerfed out of Reanimator, potentially, other than the Zindel interaction with Varus kind of it's kind of a bust. Is Bakela Delinquent is a very, very ridiculous card. It makes uh, it makes it very easy for the reanimator player to disrupt the opponent's game plan uh, in response to yours. But um, but you but if you're on the mid range side, you have to realize that they have that card, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't just blindly on three grab your gavel. You have to do it on four and play it, and then the reanimator player is forced to respond. They can't get their grasp now, right? Mm -hmm. They are forced to respond. The, 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 you are you have the upper hand against the re reanimator player. They have to respond. Get the get the burglar eyes right. They they do have responses to this. They do have responses. But um, so as a combo player, you you have to you know respond to what your opponent is doing, and that that means that your opponent's on the front foot. And, and you, if you can keep if you can keep the the combo player on the back foot, I think for a, a decent percentage of the game, I think that that's a uh, that's a good thing. Well, um, when, you, when you realize you're playing against combo, the price of ha being a combo deck is that you're running, like, you're cutting interaction with your opponent to play your masturbatory yeah. combo, right? So, um... Jeez. Just, <laughs> just like, ju just, like, you know, play around what limited interaction they have. That The reanimator has suffocates and s sabotage some n percent of the time. And, uh... Um, I mean, you can't play around suffocate. You just have to play your idiots. Yeah. But uh, but the the price of being a combo deck is that they can't interact with what you're doing. So yeah. uh, that, that that by the way, that is what makes a combo deck very good when it's good, right? Is that your plan is so uninteractable, right? That you're uh, that if you're playing in an open meta game and your opponent has nothing to do that they can respond with. Um, then you have basically won that game, right? In pretty much all cases. Like for example, this uh, at the ECQ, the one that um, I, d I did tops uh, tops uh, thirty two that one, right? So when we when when we sat down and tested the um, the reanimator match because I knew I was going to face it around two, no matter what, if I if uh, if I won, I would face a reanimator round two. I was on FTP, and um, there was no chance for us. Right, that they brought a deck that uh, they, they brought a deck that was excellent into the major deck in the field, and that's the the power of combo is that you can uh, if if people aren't prepared for you, you 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 can you can basically win a tournament easily, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, any other questions on this? I think that was uh, very informative. So thank you, the Overmaster, uh, for that. Basun, any questions on that before we go into deck of the week? No, I think we covered. We touched all our bases. Awesome. Uh, let's let's keep the train moving. Let's go here. All right, deck of the week, Wisp. All right, tell us about this deck right here. Uh, this you this... are currently top top fifty with this deck, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, the Overmaster, run through the list real sort quick. Of. Just just yeah. kind of <laughs> let the listeners know what we're talking about because I'm looking at this right now and I'm just like, what am I looking at? And so I like it, but. Uh, so just run through the list real quick. You don't have to give numbers, but um, and then tell us about this deck. Okay, I mean, uh, there there's a recent patch change. Obviously, um, mm -hmm. there there are two cards that were uh, buffed from uh, from from Wis. I think they they wanted to see more um, more uh, build around strategies, um, so they buffed a bunch of cards. But uh, Entrancer and um, and Soulbringer were both buffed. Um, Entrancer being buffed to instead of just hitting three cost units uh, up to three cost units, it hits four cost units. So of course there's a there's a, a significant amount of uh, uh, units that um, that were detrimental to the Wisp strategy. I think especially Vara, right? Um, it's just a uh, uh, as as you know, you you do have a bunch of things you can sacrifice to Vara, but at the same time, 
you have to do that, and it uh, has life steal, and it's very hard to push through the life steal sometimes. So uh, it, it was good for Enchanter to get that kind of upgrade. I think Enchanter is actually intrinsically good in a lot of strategies. I don't think it's necessarily just good in the Wisp, but it is a Wisp. So we're we're definitely running it here. And um, then you have uh, Soulbringer, um, which also got upgraded uh, to instead just when it brings back the units, uh, it, it gives them plus one plus one. I will say that I don't think Soulbringer actually needed the upgrade. I think it was already an extremely powerful card. I think that the the cards around the Wisp were um, were uh, uh, kind of what needed uh, the buff. But um, one of the things about this deck and um, that people miss always is this draft powerhouse, but n seldom used in Wisp card called Preserver of Dualities. I think that that card and Mitotic Wisp as well. Sometimes um, I think. Uh, Mitotic Wisp can can be you know trimmed or cut uh, down, but I, I think in general, I think having more uh, more uh, radiance in your deck uh, to use with it is pretty good. So um, preserver, it's basically what is preserver of? I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read what preserver of dualities does because I had to look yeah. that up. It's a uh, it's a four cost three three wisp for um for it's a radiant. Radiant. It's radiant. A radiant. I'm sorry, sorry, not radiant. I'm sorry. I apologize. I just saw a wisp on it. Then anyway, but it's a radiant. It says when you play a radiant, including preserver. Of dualities, play a one-one wisp. Pay two and exhaust preserver of dualities to give one of your wisps plus two. All right, there we go. For the listeners, that's what it does. Because I had to look that up. I was like, wait a second, what's that card? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a there's a bunch of little uh, tech choices in in this de deck that make it a make it very very powerful. Even if you um even if you don't get quite the wisp synergy uh, going, like the Zenith Temple, for example, is an extremely powerful card. I think it's one of the more underrated sites right now. Um, especially since uh, the uh, the um, the passive ability on Xenon Temple, when an enemy unit dies, steal and put in your void, is actually very very relevant currently. Not only for the Reanimator matchup, um, uh, I think the Reanimator matchup is pretty. I, I don't think that Wisp beats that deck, but um, you you can try, but I don't think it beats it. Um, but uh, for example, stealing cards to, to for uh, so that uh, your your FJS opponents and whatnot can't get back uh, cards with the uh, display of ambition and whatnot. So I, I think that um, in general, I think the Xenon Temple is pretty good. And uh, I, if you could protect it, I mean, World World Joiner, that card is a uh, uh, beating, especially against all the Gredidens and stuff running out. I think Gredidens is a little less right now, but uh, but uh, it kills those straight up. You can, they cannot beat that card, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it just, it's a board wipe once it swings. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so yeah, when got... is it when is it time to play Wisps? I mean, I think I got lucky to get top fifty with it. But uh, uh, are you I, so I, you're I, not playing it on ladder anymore? Just you had a good day and you put it away. Yeah, pretty much. I, I I've been trying to update it and, and try to trying to you know. Um, not not just me, but other people have tried to like spl make splashes to the deck. For example, for a press game because you have a bunch of targets in the deck, right? For Crown Watch press team. Um yeah. or or a splashing for like combust and madness and things of this nature. I don't think it's as good as though as uh, the original um the Xenon uh oh, okay. as, I don't think it's as consistent and whatnot. I think one of the cards that makes this deck extremely powerful um uh, is uh, that that change the wisp from being the uh, from being really terrible to okay is chairman's contract, right? Like I mean as yeah. soon as you put, if you get lucky off a chairman's contract, things happen. <laughs> uh, okay nice. cool um i actually i had tried to play this list a little bit on ladder and i went like one and four with it and yeah, uh, i just right, to be honest. fundamentally don't understand how the deck works um, i think you just i mean i think you just play your cards with the deck and if, <laughs> if it works, and if it works it works right i mean i i i planned i played it on stream right and i planned on playing it for like one or two games i was like sweet man this it's gonna be a sweet deck, right? To, to play on stream to start off and get people luring into false security wall, and then I'm gonna switch to like this tier one garbage strategy that uh, that, that allows me to climb, and then, and then, and then you just it. kept winning, poor guy. I'm yeah, so no, sorry. It's just... <laughs> so so horrible. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there, there are there are other people have worked on this deck as well. Um, I know that uh, some some person I, on Eternal Warcry was I uh, got to. Um, masters with uh with a version of the deck they they were running things like void drummer and stuff i i've tried void drummer the deck i don't necessarily like it but i mean if it uh, it when it works it works but it's very um very uh swingy yeah 
There we go. There we go. Well, if you want to have fun on the ladder, maybe not win, but want to have fun, try this deck out. Uh, it looks pretty cool, though. If you like Radiance, you like Wisp, uh, you like doing interesting things, give it a try. Give it a try. I know I will. I need to craft some of the cards, but I'm always, I'm always uh, looking to craft something, to mess with something. Even if it's not good, I have crafted a lot of bed decks in my time just to try them out. And the the, <laughs> um, the legendary that you're missing in the deck... Yes. Um, pe people have said that that card is kind of like, you know, uh, you, you could probably do like a, uh, if you, if you didn't want to craft as in temples, you could probably put one in the market. Right. And, yeah. and, uh, and include like the, um, the smuggler and things. Yeah. I think I, have, I think I have two Xenon temples and so I'm missing. Okay. Yeah. So like I'm missing, huh, I'm missing two. But anyway, and then the other cars, I think I'm just missing like one each of, or something like that. Or maybe I'm missing all four. Yeah. So anyway. So yeah, so I just need to craft a few cards there and everything. But thanks for bringing the deck. It looks interesting. It looks it looks fun. Um, anything with has to do with yetis, elves, wisp, anything like tribal synergies. I like trying out just anything like that. So uh, definitely cool. All right, Overmaster, where can they find you on Twitter, uh, Twitch, all that stuff, Discord? Uh, give us give give us your sign off and your shout outs. All right, um, like shout out. Uh uh, SPG, um, uh, they're a fantastic team. I've definitely uh, enjoyed uh, my uh, time with them, brewing and uh, uh, brewing and playing with them. They've, uh, they've, um, you know, I, I feel like I got a, a little lucky in my first invitational appearance, and uh, I think that uh, SPG has helped me uh, become a uh, a much better, a much better and more consistent player, so that I can, you know, be the be the player that I that 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 that, that invitational showed I could be right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, yeah, you can find me, I, I mean, you, I have a Twitter, so the underscore overmaster, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to talk to me on that. Like I, I, I very rarely visit tw Twitter. Uh, the, the way you can reach me is probably, um, best through discord and it's a uh, SPG, the overmaster. You can normally find me on like the eternal discord. I'm a moderator there on the, on the eternal discord. So like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there quite a, uh, quite a bit. Um, and uh, you can also find me. Uh, I'm going to stream a, a little more. Um, I would like to stream like later on in the night, but that that um, uh, our our good friend uh, uh, Danny is looking to get uh, get partner uh, on Twitch. So I've been um, I've been trying to help him out with that a little bit by by not blocking up that time slot. So I, I will be streaming, though, uh, a, little, a little bit later on. Uh, and it's uh, twitch.tv slash the overmaster. Awesome. Uh, if you want to find me there. Cool, cool. Uh, but soon, what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Human Venipede. It is a fantastic tag, uh, no matter what Yadabite tries to tell you. Um, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nrosh1, N-R-A-U-S-C-H, the number one. Uh, and uh, thank you for the Overmaster for coming on, and I love you very much, and I will see you guys next week. All right, for me, you can find me at what the deck HS on Twitter. You can also find our podcast and any info about it on Twitter as well at From the Void Cast. We have a website, from thevoidpodcast.com. There's a link there that will take you straight to our Discord where we just chat about Eternal and, and some other things. So if you want to look us up there, you can find me there as well. Also, you can find me in the Eternal Discord and pretty much anything to do with Eternal. So thank you all for watching. Uh, we're going to stick around. If you're, watch, uh, if you're live with us, we're going to do probably some uh, Q&A questions with the chat. And But that's it. So we'll see you next week. From the void. Thanks, everyone. Uh, right, yeah, so here. this show's a little long in the tooth, so I thought instead of doing some gameplay, we would just spend five or ten minutes with the chat and answer some chat questions. Some quality uh, chat time, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, chat time. Here we go. <laughs> so this, is, this is not for those smelly audio-only listeners. This is, uh, this is just for the YouTube VOD. <laughs> Um, we had a question asked earlier, Boyd HS asked, is Torch balanced? Uh, it's balanced in the fact that the game is balanced around it, right? <laughs> like, like, Teacher of Humility can exist in a world with Torch, and I think mm -hmm. Teacher of Humility is insane without Torch existing. Yes.
Yeah, yes. the the card, um, the card Whispering Wind becomes uh, an insane powerhouse if you don't have Torch <laughs> and things of this nature, right? Imagine like, a world where FGS has to run Signal Flare. Ooh. <laughs> That's a that's a terrible. I think a signal flare would have to be fast at that point. But yeah, that, that's a that's a certainly a, definitely a downgrade for sure. I mean, yeah. you have things like uh, Oric Eric interrogator and thing, uh, things that are four threes instead of you know being a four four a four four because the 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 fact that there's they're, they're very very powerful. You you get a get something on there. You start getting this draw engine. It's just very very t difficult and tough to handle. But you have the torch as a a backdrop to so many different things, right? So yeah, I mean, torch isn't really a <laughs> it shouldn't be balanced by its very nature. But I mm -hmm. think in the context of eternal, it is. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Zeroshio just asked his wife who. Uh, is who doesn't play Hearthstone but light, loves Eternal. If she was to spend money on the game, what would be the first purchase? Yeah, I would say at this point in the games, uh, somebody in chat said the campaigns, and I, I do agree. Um, the campaign is like the best bang for your buck. I also saw, I have a little insider knowledge that Zeroshio said on Discord that his wife really enjoys um, PvE content in the game. Uh, I think the campaigns are actually pretty fun PvE content, like all of them. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the quality of the cards, I've enjoyed the actual playing of the campaign of every one of them. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll agree to that. Um, there, there's also, okay, so uh, the the worst campaign is Jack's Bounty, but there is an Alienware thing. I, I, I don't have the listing or anything like that. That's but definitely it, over. That was months ago. I, it, I think there's still uh, stuff left for that. <laughs> But there's still a uh, um, really uh, huh. yeah yeah, yeah. I, th oh, I think so I, I heard it for uh, j just like a couple weeks ago I still heard that there were still um a spot to, uh, or um keys available for that so wow. yeah, yeah yeah so th that that's a campaign that you don't have to get the other campaigns are a lot better right uh, in terms of the card quality especially the latest one the latest one has both the Zindel and Vira and things of this nature right yeah that's a really good one that's yes I think the I guess you start out, if you want to say for the first campaign to buy, I would say probably the latest campaign, wouldn't you say? Yeah, so start, I think so. Yeah. Start with that. That one has the best cards in it. Yeah, yeah. If if you're looking for like other stuff besides the campaign to buy, like there's things like the Founders Pack and whatnot that are really good value. I don't know if they're mm -hmm. still on, but a uh, uh, Founders Pack. And there's also the... Um, there's another one. The, uh, the, the one that I... The, oh, I know. The, there... There's... Isn't there also like a starter pack too you can buy that's pretty cheap? That's uh, it gives you like some packs, some good value, some like gems yeah, and everything. That's, I believe that's yeah, yeah. And then, but yeah, the founders pack, the one for like what is it, fifty dollars? I think fifty US. That's a it's a good deal if you want to go that much with it. You get a lot, get a lot of value for that. If you go through the website, you get draft tickets too, so you can just get more cards that way. But if you uh, throws your if your life, like you said, she likes more of the. Uh, PV content, then yeah, the campaign, the the campaigns go for it. Stories are yeah. pretty good, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't, if she doesn't, if it's not really, yeah. she cares about ladder or anything. Just uh, start from the very beginning and go through it. So it's like the whole story. So if you want, I kind of, I kind of like how they're choosing to go like a Tarantino y like uh, <laughs> out of order storytelling uh, method here with the campaigns and the the set releases. Yes, I know. I, I just want to know who writes the stories and everything for for Dire Wolf Digital. I'm just curious about who does that because I like I want to see what influences in their life have like led into this like you know kind of direction how they're telling it. So <laughs> it's definitely like every fantasy novel ever made, Tarantino <laughs> and westerns. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I know it's this weird combination of all these. Uh... All these things like fa fantasy and westerns, and yeah, it's just I, I don't know. It's when I saw a guy with like a guy with a six shooter with a dinosaur in the background, I was like, okay, <laughs> this is gonna be cool. Like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. um, someone someone asked, what is eternal missing gameplay wise? What is eternal huh. missing gameplay wise? Uh, more fast speed interaction, probably. You think so? Um, there isn't a lot that I would change with that. That, that uh, you open up the, the that that's um, it, it's hard. 
uh, the thing is, is that they they balance the game around their mobile client and things like that, right? So that you don't have to click around as much. Like for example, if you go and load up MTG Arena right now, it's like <laughs> it is very very clunky, right, to play games. Um, they've done a good job with it, but like at the same time, it's like uh, everything is fast speed in in uh, in Magic, right? Mm -hmm. You just get so so much that you can interact with at any given time, and uh, Eternal's not like that, and um, I think it's probably for the best for um, for uh, for speed of gameplay and stuff like that. So I don't know. Uh, I, I would like I to have. I would Sorry, like to have. Um, I would like to have uh, units with abilities be able to use them at fa fast speed. At, at least some of them, right? Mm -hmm. That that's that's what I would. Uh, you mean more so than like ambush or more ambush units, or are just like a different keyword for that altogether? What do you think? Like if you could use Marley's ability end of turn, or something. yeah, exactly okay. in response okay. to things. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here's 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 what I think. What it, this is like more of a balance thing, I guess, than a gameplay thing. But the fact that the year is 2019 and we're like six expansions into Eternal, and I'm still putting Oni Ronins in my aggro decks, means that they're not putting aggro cards in the game, and I want more of them. <laughs> it's insane to me that I'm I'm like. I'm, I'm like flipping through my Rolodex of good aggro cards and like playing and choosing Oni Ronan well, out know, of the buffet. You know, but soon when a rotation happens, they might print. <laughs> I know how you feel about rotation, so I, I actually don't care about rotation at this okay. point. Just print, just print me playable cards. You need Oni Ronan 2.0, right? Yeah, I, 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 what I want is a, a sleepy lion in chat gets it. I want a two drop Yeti that's not champion of fury. Yes. Can I please? Can I please? Have a Yeti that costs two that's not embarrassing to put onto the field. <laughs> Every time I play a fearless Yeti, I, I, I blush. It sucks. Um, <laughs> All they need to do is like print you like a, a two cost, two three Yeti that when it goes and comes into play, it scouts or something, right? Just two like, three. <laughs> it needs to be a three yeah. two. It guy. needs to be a three two? Okay. You, yeah. you can't have everything. You, you can't have everything. I'm, try, I'm trying to. I'm trying a two three two drop is not playable <laughs> unless, the, unless the ability is insane. All right. What what about let, let's go let's go teacher of humility route like a two cost three three, like I don't even need it to be that good. <laughs> I don't need it to be that good. I just want it to be playable. You, you know you know you know and understand how good Oni Ronin is, right? It's it's up there with things like Goblin Guide and Magic. Like this don't this talk card to me is about Magic. I don't know what Magic is. <laughs> Well, Oni, Oni Ronin is a ridiculous card. So I mean, it's going to be powerful forever. Pretty much, right? I don't. That, but I don't rotation. need things that are as good as Oni. I'm saying, I just want aggro to be playable. And I, it's I, like the, the reason why aggro is not playable is because of things like um, Navara, uh, Vengeance uh, Seeker, right? Like that. Uh, the the the, uh, the the amount of life steal that they printed recently is just. Uh, but it, it, it's it's taken its toll on aggro. I think. Yeah. I think Mul that's what. The, Mulligan what says there is a two drop Yeti, a fearless Yeti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you just hear the big rant I just talked about? How bad Fearless <laughs> Yeti is. It is a terrible card. Although it does work with Wump, and I do like, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. <laughs> would, why would you ignore what I said about the literal card you wanted to talk about? Um, what? I, yeah. Oh, let's okay. See here. Uh, Yeti's is a pretty powerful archetype. But I don't know, like it. it, it yeah, pretty powerful, especially for a tribal synergy. Like I, I would prefer them to have uh, not not just yetis. I mean, yeah, yetis is a is a fun archetype for sure. But I would I, I do want them to have pick up pick up the slack yeah, on here's getting the thing. getting oh, aggro into the game a little bit more. I, I I bring aggro to tournaments all the time. I love playing aggro. It's one of my favorite ways to play the game. I know every time I queue aggro into an event that I don't have a realistic chance of winning that event. ETS, ECQ, I know I'm playing for like some high, like I could maybe spike it and get to a decent placing. I'm playing for placing and I'm not playing to win the event. And all I want is to play an aggro deck and not, I don't need it to be the most powerful strategy. I don't need it to be tier like, like, Point zero 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 one. I just want to have a realistic chance of winning an event when I queue an aggro deck. Am I crazy? No, I mean, I mean, aggro is is having a healthy, well, a good aggro deck 
That's not. I'm trying to say here. It's not not mall. (laughs) Yes. It's not (laughs) mall or it's not Skycrag because Skycrag's. It's okay. It's decent, but it's not good. Like, I don't think it's like a great deck or anything, but you need to have a really good aggro deck to help balance out the format, I think. And so otherwise, Mm -hmm. you. You get there is a pretty powerful aggressive uh, deck that people haven't been playing recently, and that's uh, uh, Haunted Highway. But I think Haunted Highway is more like a... Uh, it, it, it's an aggro combo deck. It's not a pure combo. It's yeah, not a pure aggro deck. Yeah, Haunted synergies. Highway does not count as queuing an aggro deck. In yeah, my yeah. I mean, it has, it has those... If you have the right draw, it turns into an aggro deck, and you just win on turn four or something like that. But, but most of the time, you have, like you said, you have to combo as synergistic and everything else. But anyway, I see there's a question for you. <laughs> All right, this will be we'll one or two more. If we get one more after this one, then okay. we'll answer that one. But uh, question for Travis: Do you fear that you peaked in rank too early, and how mad on the internet will you be if you don't make top one hundred this month? Uh, asked by Missing Toes, who has a direct line into my very soul because he knows me well enough to know that when I hit top one hundred last night, my first thought was sick. Awesome. Now I, I just have to be disciplined and maintain it for the rest of the month. But the second thought I had was, oh, damn it. I'm going to be so mad when I don't get this. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be actually uh, pretty bummed out. This is the hardest I've ever tried. And this is the most disciplined I've ever been uh, playing ranked ladder for a month. And it's pretty hard for me, uh, especially as somebody who like likes streaming and streams a lot. I don't stream a lot. I stream regularly um, to, like, actually try and maintain a high rank. And I'm not sure that I can do it next month if I don't get it this month. Mm. Mm. Not for lack of skill. I'm not sure that I'm, like, super skilled enough to consistently finish in the top whatever. But I am, like, not sure that I have the discipline to do this for another month. You know what I mean? And it's going to be, like... Pretty frustrating if I don't get it this month. I know exactly what you mean. I, I, I haven't. I also have not made that uh, that elusive top one hundred, and I just feel don't feel, yeah, the, the discipline disciplined enough, like you said, to to just stay in the top one hundred forever, right? Kind of thing. Like I know that some players can just do it, right? They can play their tier one decks, right, and they can just stay yeah. there. But like I, I experiment a lot, and uh, having to not be able to experiment quite as much, right? Is, is kind of a... Uh, it, it is frustrating. It is frustrating. Yeah. All right. Last question. Should top 100 give additional rewards at Masters? I mean, the, it does give additional rewards. The, the additional reward is an invitation to a tournament that pays out like a few thousand dollars, right? That's 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 the reward. Mm-hmm. You think there should be any more like, a, like I guess, in-game incentive like... I don't know an extra legendary, you know, or premium legendary, or or something like that. I think I think that's what they're they're kind of going for, something like that, or extra packs or something. <laughs> or besides, I, I wouldn't hate it, but I don't need it. I'm not campaigning for that. I okay. think the game has bigger issues that I would like to be changed than something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe if I were consistently finishing in the top fifty, I would <laughs> yeah. I would fight to get richer. Yes. There there is one thing I would like changed about this deck. Uh, th- sorry, this um, this game is the stupid friends list. Holy crap! The fact that I have to delete people from my friends list uh, when I'm only at a hundred is just ridiculous in 2019. Come on! What if every time you finish top 100, you got one more spot on your friends list? Holy! That, that, <laughs> <laughs> I would I would be making top 100 every single time. Holy it's a doggy crap. dog world out here now. Oh man! There there there's the there's the reward for top 100. There's you get an extra <laughs> spot. <laughs> there there we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, dragon food. Uh, like we'll we'll just say that that's our reward. We'll. From the void, just wants one additional spot if you make the top 100, like for your friends list. That's what we want. So, all right, I think that wraps up the questions. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I'm just trying. To, there's like more things. They're talking about Hearthstone and Blizzard now. Okay, never mind. We're just we're gonna go on. Okay, okay. we jumped the shark. <laughs> we jumped the shark. It, it's 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 going downhill. So, all right, thank you all for sticking around and chat. This is uh, thank you for watching. This is if you're on YouTube, uh, and we will see you next week. Later, everyone. <laughs>